Would you like to learn how to make glow-in-the-dark cocktail pods? Well, today on WTF, we're going to show you an amazing technique to make cocktail pods glow. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Chef Scott Guerin. And I'm Janie Wang, one of the owners of Modernist Pantry. Here on WTF, every week we talk about unique ingredients and techniques, and we show you how to do these recipes in your kitchen. So subscribe, ring the bell, and you'll get notified of our episodes when they come out. And this week we are going to be showing you how to make glow-in-the-dark cocktail spheres, which uh, I know you're already excited, I know I am, so we're going to jump right into it. Um, Scott, I know we did an entire episode all about how do you make cocktail pots. Mm -hmm. We'll link to that at the end of this episode in the card. Um, but can you go over for the folks who may have never seen, you know, um, spherification, if I can pronounce it correctly, at work, what exactly is happening when you make a cocktail pod? Yeah, so the method we're going to talk about really quickly is frozen reverse spherification. And what that means is I have some cocktail pods here. They're basically just ice cubes at this point, And they have a little bit of calcium in them. Mm -hmm. And then I have a bath here of perfected sodium alginate and water. So when I take the, uh, the sphere and I put it in there, the calcium will start grabbing onto that uh, sodium alginate and will create a network around it. And that network is a gel and it will hold the liquid on the inside mm -hmm. and not let it come out so you have these really beautiful little uh, spheres that you can then eat. Yeah, so for more information on that, definitely catch that episode, a lot more detail about what goes into it. Um, but today we wanted to do something a little bit different, a little bit fun, so we decided we're going to make them glow. All right, so the qu obvious question <laughs> there is, what's making it glow and what are we doing? So there's two ingredients. Mm -hmm. One of them is quinine, which is found in tonic water. Mm -hmm. That's basically the only place you can find it. Uh, and then uh, UV light. Okay. So, <laughs> so not an edible ingredient, but it is an ingredient uh, nonetheless. So basically what it does is that the UV light usually passes through things uh, unless there's something to catch on to it and be illuminated. So when it goes through, it finds that quinine and it literally lights it up. So when we put these on there, they will light up this bright, beautiful blue color. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you can have, if you have a, a party or um, this would probably be good around a Halloween party or a rave, depending on what you're throwing at your house. Uh, <laughs> Scott's known for throwing raves yeah, at his house. Yeah, big, big rave guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> but if there's like black lights, mm -hmm. these would be go good because they'll be like really bright and really mm -hmm. kind of vibrant and like stand out. It's a really cool presentation. Yeah. So I know you just mentioned tonic water and obviously we know a few drinks that, mm -hmm. you know, involve tonic water, which we'll do one of them today. Well, I'm sure someone's thinking, all right, just put tonic water in anything and it's going to glow. What is that true? Or are there some limitations that people should be aware of before they jump into it? In a sense, yes. Mm -hmm. If the basis of what you're making is tonic water, it's going to glow when it's under UV light. Mm -hmm. If you start adding a lot of things to change the color or if you're adding things to change the, uh, you know, like the texture of it or anything like that, sometimes you run into okay. some issues. So just make sure it's as clear as possible and that will allow it to uh, light up. I tried to do something where I added color and tried to make different colors mm -hmm. and it didn't work as well as I wanted it to. So we're just going to do a very clear cocktail today and we'll just show you really quickly how to make a really clear, really flavorful cocktail that then you can illuminate. Okay, what's the cocktail we're making So today? it's very simple. We're basically just making a gin and tonic. So okay. we have gin here. So we're doing a five or a four to one ratio. So four parts uh, tonic water, one part gin. So small amount of alcohol to it, but you're still getting alcohol nonetheless. Mm -hmm. And then here's the calcium. So I'm just going to mix that in, and that will dissolve and it'll be cr uh, completely clear. So just let that do it. And also we're going to be releasing any of the carbonation. Mm -hmm. Here's a really cool thing that I like to do. If you wanted to color them when the lights are off, we can take a little bit of shimmer dust and we put them in there. And this will give a really cool texture, whether they're lit up or not, but it also adds a little bit of color without having to add any flavor and you can really gauge. So it's just gonna be slightly colored and you'll get some really nice shimmering in That's there. Cool. Yeah. Now if you wanted to, here's where you can flavor that. Okay. So Alice and the Magician makes these really amazing mm -hmm. um, aromatic elixirs that you can place in there. We can freeze them and when you make them, oh. you get all of that. So okay. it's the, the retro uh, nasal kind of 
So you can make a ginger gin and tonic. This is actually elderflower uh, tonic water we have in there. So if we wanted to add ginger or we wanted to add citrus, we Ooh. can make them. So when you have them out, they don't all look like this, which just look like ice cubes. Mm -hmm. You can have your, okay, I know my yellow ones are my ginger. I know my green ones are my oh, lime. Okay. So I, like I don't that. have to worry about, you know, mixing them up or having to eat a bunch of them mm -hmm. before the party. So I mix that in and that's really it. From here, you can pour them into your molds. We'll just pour a few just to show. And during the freezing process, any of that carbonation is going to come out. If carbonation happened to get stuck in there, mm -hmm. uh, it's not a good thing because the carbonation would just burst those thin skins. So you want to make sure it's completely out. The freezing okay. process is going to do that. So now if we wanted to, once they're all frozen, I can take it and I mix up my sodium alginate. Okay, And this is our perfected sodium yes, alginate, perfect. which is... Um, uh, it, it's pretty cool because it hydrates a lot faster and it's a lot less dust and handling. But if you have just regular sodium alginate in your pantry, you can use that as well. You'll just need to wait a lot longer to uh, have it be ready. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to let these sit in here for about four minutes. Okay. And we'll use the magic of television, so it should be very quickly. But we'll come back and we'll, we'll be able to see those pods completely done. Very okay. cool. All right, we're about to take these cocktail spheres out of their setting bath. But first, I wanted to talk about this week's giveaway, which will be both a packet of the calcium lactate gluconate, as well as a packet of the Perfectus sodium alginate. So in order to win and enter this week's giveaway, all you have to do is leave in the comments below a cocktail that you would like to see us tackle next. So it's that easy, enter to win. I'm gonna pass it back over to Scott so he can take these cocktail spheres out. All right, so as they melted, the calcium got in contact with the sodium alginate, and now I'm able to take them out. And there is a little bit of ice left in them, and that is totally fine. Totally fine. They look like uh, frog eggs, but <laughs> giant and delicious. So let's see, you can take a look at that. Right, and there's a little bit of sparkling in there if we get really close, mm -hmm. just nice. And that one we did with actually a white uh, shimmer dust, so. Ooh. Okay, so now that you've taken them out, do you need to, how long do you let them rinse for? You just rinse them off, just, just for a few seconds. Mm -hmm. Basically, just to get any excess off the outside. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna place them onto a paper towel. Generally, I'll place them on with the spoon so it's a little easier to pick up. Mm -hmm. uh, some people will put them directly on, but then trying to pick them up right. is going to be difficult. Uh, these cocktail spheres do go for a longer time in the bath because generally they're larger. Mm -hmm. They're almost like a, a shot size sometimes. You can make them smaller if you'd like. Anything works. But the longer you go, the more sturdy the outside's going to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But also the sometimes less uh, pleasant of a texture. Yeah, and one of the questions that we often get for people who want to make these is how far ahead of time can I make them? How long can I keep them? Because obviously they don't want to be doing them as they're trying to serve their guests. With these, mm -hmm. they're actually really forgiving. So you can make them, uh, put them into basically another batch of the cocktail mm -hmm. and then let them sit for you know a few days and then you can scoop them out and use them when you need to use them cool so that's really cool mm -hmm. um other types of spherification which we want to get into you won't be able to do that but with the, these really forgiving awesome great right. right. so we could take this one we could place it right on here right away and you won't be able to see much actually you can see a little bit in that ice that's there but when we turn mm -hmm. off the lights is when we're really going to see it so let's dry this one off and we'll put it on there and then we're going to turn out all the lights and we can really see just how amazing these look. Awesome. That looks good. And just for reference, just so you know I'm not fibbing, I'm going to put just water. That is just water right there. Mm -hmm. So when you look at all of these, you'll notice that the water is not illuminated at all, but the spheres are. Okay, let's one check them out. One of them run away on us. I know, I was like, that one's just sneaking across the black light. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so... I'm going to snap my fingers, and I have these guys trained so well that, boom, the lights will go off immediately. Okay. Right? So, and boom, the lights are off. And as you can see, those spheres are glowing blue. So they will glow a really bright kind of blue color uh, under the um, 
or yeah, over the UV light. <laughs> if you wanted to, you could always elevate it a little bit. You could put a piece of plexiglass, whatever it is. If you are really dark inside your room, you could put it over overhead, the lights overhead, and they'll illuminate. Um, but obviously the closer they are, the more illuminated they're going to get, or the more UV light you have, the more it's gonna catch and kind of light up that uh, quinine. Yeah, so and they actually look more cool in person because we get like a purplish tinge effect that yep. unfortunately the camera is not able to cover. Yeah, I think they're amazing. All right, so let's come back. Right, Ooh, I can't see a thing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, lights are back on. Okay, well, and I think now it's the taste test part. You want to take one, Scott, because you made these very large. Uh, yeah, so you can see them better on, on screen. But yes, I will take one because I love gin and tonic. I am not a gin and tonic person. Generally speaking, how is it? Delicious. I know. I put citrus in this one. You can really tell. Yeah, and that's the beauty of the Alice in Magician elixirs and this. They are amazing, as I'm sure, uh, you know, if you haven't caught those episodes, we'll link to them at the end of this episode. Mm -hmm. So I hope that you can have fun with this because it is so fun to do. And I think, unfortunately, our camera can only capture partially how cool these look. They look way better in person. But I hope that you enjoy. And until next week, from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie Wang. And I'm Scott Guerin.